Uh, thank you, Bernie. And uh, it's great to be here tonight. Um, Bernie, I want to acknowledge you, uh, your board, Alan Clayton, uh, and everyone involved in GRV for everything you've done. Um, I want to acknowledge Tim Ball, the Shadow Minister for Racing and a great supporter of, uh, of, of, the, of all three racing codes. Uh, we don't tend to have a lot of politics between us, we just tend to exchange tips. Um, <laughs> I want to acknowledge uh, Dale Monteith, the uh, Chairman of Harness Racing Victoria, uh, on the job that you're doing, Dale. Uh, and I just want to mention, uh, where's Jeff Dawson? I just want to mention, Smokey, how fantastic uh, Sandown Park's looking tonight. Uh, and I want to acknowledge all of the other representatives of clubs, the owners, the trainers, the breeders, who are here tonight uh, to celebrate uh, the 2016 Victorian Greyhound Awards and to celebrate your industry. Um, I'm, I think tonight we've got the opportunity to recognise the achievements of those who've been pivotal to the success of the industry. Uh, and I want to talk about um, the industry primarily um, and, and talk about, you know, what we might colloquially call the troubles uh, just at the end. But um, since the uh, Greyhound uh, Awards, the Greyhound Racing Awards were presented last in 2014, uh, people here might remember we didn't have an awards ceremony last year because it was due to happen, I think, the same week as the Four Corners story aired. But since that 2014 uh, awards night, uh, there's been almost $4 million go from the Victorian Racing Industry Fund into almost 30 projects aimed at growing Victorian greyhound racing. Uh, because investment in infrastructure is absolutely essential to continue to grow this code uh, and to continue to provide uh, uh, a safe code, a safe workplace, and to ensure that animal welfare issues uh, are at the fore. In country Victoria, uh, there's been projects uh, including the Glenview Park track redevelopment at Traralgon, uh, stage one of the major pavilion refurbishment at Warrnambool, uh, function centre upgrades at both Bendigo and Shepparton. And I was out at the Bendigo upgrade with Jacinta Allen only a few weeks ago, uh, and the installation of the new children's playground at Ballarat. And in the metro, at the metro tracks, we've seen a renovated pavilion at the Meadows, uh, and of course the new uh, grandstand entrance and the new betting ring renovations here at Sandown Park. Uh, there's also been, out of the VRIF, uh, through the Race Day Attraction Program, um, a, uh, almost $700,000 provided uh, to stimulate attendance at all 13 venues across the state. Um, they include contributions to events held at Warrnambool, at Sale, uh, at Sandown and GRV's Little Big Day Out, and those contributions from the VRIF and from the Race Day Attraction Program will continue and they will continue to help drive this code forward. Uh, everybody uh, should remember that the uh, uh, racing industry fund is racing industry money being ploughed back into the industry. It's not a gift, it's the industry's money and it's being used to grow this industry and to ensure uh, we can put on the best show we possibly can. As for the awards tonight, um, this is an industry which has 14,000 registered owners. Uh, 2,600 trainers and 700 breeders. And I think those figures are a demonstration of the fierce competition that exists in the industry uh, and the skill, uh, the drive and the dedication that it takes to be recognised as a leader in the field. Now, there was some uh, pre-awards handed out uh, a bit earlier, um, and I do want to congratulate the winners that were announced earlier in the evening, including Jared O'Keefe, who won the Ned Bryant Silver Fox Award, Eileen Travis for the GRV Board Welfare Award, and Andrea Daly, who won the Metropolitan Trainer of the Year and the Provincial Trainer of the Year Award. Uh, and, yeah, give him a hand. Uh, and there'll be um, many awards announced later in the night, and no doubt they'll be no less impressive. And uh, when we're talking about the Victorian Greyhound of the Year, um, what, a, um, w what an array to choose from, whether it's uh, Dinah Double One or Fernando Bale or Space Star or No Donuts. I mean, the, whichever dog is crowned Greyhound of the Year is going to be a sensational uh, race or a sensational animal, and the connections, no doubt, will be extremely proud. I'll also have the pleasure of presenting the Ken Carr uh, medal uh, a little bit later on, uh, and that's an award that embodies the spirit of Greyhound racing in Victoria. Um, you heard 
uh, earlier from uh, both Bernie and the Premier by, uh, by video message uh, about uh, all of the... Uh, all, all of the issues that have confronted this industry over the last 18 months. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was uh, very bracing, very confronting for everybody uh, involved, uh, whether, whether in the industry, in politics or in the community more generally, when those images were aired on Four Corners back in January, February 2015. Uh, and our industry, uh, uh, you know, went through... Uh, a number of reviews, the Milne Review and the Perna Review, and 68 recommendations were put in place, uh, and we uh, ended up with a new board, uh, with a new executive team, uh, and major change has occurred. Uh, and uh, nobody in the industry anticipated the announcement that came from the New South Wales government just a few weeks ago. And on the day um, that that announcement was made, um, not just myself, but the South Australian Minister for Racing and the Queensland Minister for Racing uh, all got calls within a couple of minutes asking whether we were going to follow suit. And the answer from all of us was no. The answer from all of us was that we would continue to support our industry. And when I was asked uh, why, um, it was, I think it's very important to reflect on the fact uh, that we needed to make a, uh, a, a strong, uh, and, an, and an absolutely unequivocal statement very, very early in the piece because equivocation would have been incredibly damaging for this industry. But the facts are these. The decision of the New South Wales Government was a decision based on a report commissioned by the New South Wales Government into the New South Wales industry. It wasn't a report into the Victorian industry or the Queensland industry or the South Australian industry. The Victorian industry participants were not consulted they had no input. Uh, as, uh, as you all know, we have in place uh, a new board led by Bernie Carolyn, a new executive team led by Alan Clayton, who have made major, major changes to this industry over the last uh, year or year and a half. Uh, we have an industry which, as the Premier indicated, supports 3,000 plus jobs, which contributes over $300 million to the Victorian economy. But more importantly, an industry where uh, rather than sit around and wait 18 months for a report from a retired judge, an industry which took our reports that were handed down more than a year ago and got on and implemented those recommendations, changed the board, made animal welfare a greater focus, increased spending on integrity, increased spending on inspectorate, reduced breeding numbers, made fundamental change. And you know, I know that for a number of participants in the industry, the initiatives uh, that are sometimes uh, brought to your doorstep by Alan Clayton and by Bernie Carolyn uh, can be confronting. But what we now know is that those initiatives are absolutely essential for the long-term health and sustainability of this industry. And this board and this government uh, are all about ensuring uh, that long-term sustainability and the long-term future of greyhound racing. So this industry and these jobs and this tradition uh, is not going to be put aside uh, with, all the, with all of the things that are at stake because of a report commissioned by another state into another state's industry. This industry has reformed. The reform job must continue, but we have put we have put the lie to the suggestion that greyhound racing is beyond reform and I know that the Victorian industry will continue to demonstrate that in the years ahead. So we have, I think, a strong future with the right approach, uh, with uh, the, the, the right leadership, which I absolutely believe we have from Greyhound Racing Victoria. Um, this is an industry that is sustainable. This is an industry that the participants love. Uh, and most importantly, this is an industry where the participants love their dogs. Uh, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Uh, the, the, and, 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 and the last thing that people should remember is this. If those people that uh, are coming, not all of them, but some of the people that, come up, that are coming after greyhound racing, if people think they'll stop at greyhounds, they ought to think again. They ought to think again. So this is a night to celebrate the industry, an industry where, um, uh, where, where none of us underestimate the issues that have existed, where none of us underestimate the challenge that lies ahead, 
but where none of us uh, want to disrespect the enormous strides that have been made, where none of us want to forget the great achievements that, uh, that have been made, the great achievements that we celebrate tonight, uh, and where all of us commit to one another to do those things that are necessary to ensure a strong, vibrant, sustainable industry uh, where people matter and where animal welfare matters. Thanks very much.